Maya! Mystic Maya! There, there, pearls. I I can't take it anymore. Mwah! Look, it'll be all right. Everything may still work out. Huh? The condition was that we had to get a not guilty verdict. And so far, the kidnapper has kept his word and hasn't hurt Maya. And he won't because Mr. Angarda hasn't been given a guilty sentence yet. <laughs> Cheer up. We don't have time to stand around crying. We have to get going. You're right. Mystic Maya is in much more pain than I am. Yes, that's right, so... Hey, you guys! Glad I caught you, pal! Mr. Scruffy Detective! Oh boy, looks like Detective Gumshoe has been dubbed Mr. Scruffy Detective in Pearl's book now. It's just plain old Mis Mr. Dick Gumshoe now. <laughs> I came to talk to you, pal. But we're kind of busy right now. I mean, breathe out the side of my mouth like this. So what are you going to do from now on? What do I mean, pal? Well, you've been fired, right? So do you have a new job lined up yet? Oh, that. Ah. What am I supposed to do now, pal? I, I don't have anything coming in at all until my next payday. What are you talking about? You don't have another payday. I guess that means I'm just going to have to work here at your place, pal. Say what? You'll be searching for things that will prove Mr. Ungard's innocence all day, right? Well, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to help you, pal. I've got lots of experience of investigating and watching other, over other people's places. I'm great at making really simple meals, pal. I'll take care of it all. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let Mr. Scruffy Detective take care of things. Oh my God, you're so helpful and nice and adorable. Okay, by the way, what's your best dish? Instant noodles, pal. Why am I surrounded by people who only eat cheap, unhealthy foods? Including myself. That was the first time I've ever seen Mr. Edgeworth act like that. Never thought he'd say something like, he didn't care if Miss Andrews killed herself. That shit was fucking hardcore. He said that? How horrible. But because of him doing that, we got the truth finally. The truth. Miss Andrews' last testimony. I wonder if that was the truth. I'll give you that there was nothing strange in her trust testimony itself, but I still think there's something fundamentally wrong with the whole thing. You mean about that thing, pal? Why would she want to, no, I mean, almost need to frame Mr. Ungard? I couldn't figure that out from anything she said all day. Then, then you're saying that testimony was a lie? Not a lie, per se. It just feels like there's more than meets the eye. But that's what Edgeworth would like us to believe. That's such a dirty trick. Even that woman prosecutor was better than that. Francisca Von Karma. Speaking of Miss Von Karma, do you have any more information on our condition? Wasn't she shot this morning? Miss Von Karma was shot today on the way to work. On the way to the trial by a pistol, pal. But she's going to be fine, right? I mean, Edward said she was in stable condition, but, well, she was shot in the shoulder, so she's okay and still hanging in there. They should be done taking the bullet out, so she's probably resting at the hospital. Which one? What? Are you going to visit our pal? No. Well, I was kind of thinking about it. Hey, you've actually got a heart, don't you? She looked like she was being tortured to death, not being able to go to the trial today. So maybe it'd be good for her if you went to uh, help let her whip you for a bit, pal. Let's go let her whip us, Mr. Nick! Now I'm definitely not going. Um, let's see, the name of the hospital. Oh yeah, it's Hottie Clank. That name sends a chill down my spine. Well, I guess it can't hurt to stop by and say hi. Never thought I'd ever come back to this place. Oh God. Mm, yes, are you here to visit a patient? Mm. Uh, hi, wait a second, you're... Mm, yes, I'm Detective Hottie, ho ho. Why are you still here? Is it, is it obvious? Mm, yes, what is it? Can I help you? You can tell me. Mm, yes. Director Hottie. Edgeworth? Mm, yes, I'm Director Hottie. Ho, ho. Oh, you're the man from this morning. Mm, yes, what is it? Uh -huh. Director Francisca. How is Francisca Von Karma? Mm, you don't need to worry. Mm, yes, she's in good hands. Because you see, I'm personally taking good care of her. Mm, yes, he <laughs> Mm, yes, and that thing, that surgery, it went well. You have my granite tomb. Looks like Edward doesn't know about this director and his secret. Oh, he's a fucking moron! She looks so pitiful, absolutely terrified. Mm, yes, but I understand. Mm, mm, yes, her opponent was a gun after all. <laughs> 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 she, 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 one would expect her to be fucked up given that her opponent was a gun. Mm, yes. What? And when I stuck up on her real secret like, she would scream really loud. Mm, yes. I see. Ah, but she's really cute too. When I do that, she'd whip me with a whip, huh? Boy, did I cry like a baby. Mm, yes, but I think I could get used to it. Mm. Ah. 
Go back to your room. You're so mean, uh -huh. so mean, my frisky friska. That's uh huh. Okay, okay, uh, mm, yes. It's time for my IV drops, mm, yes. And what are those tulips doing in your hands, Mr. Phoenix Wright? I knew I shouldn't have come here. I was shot in front of the courthouse in my right shoulder. <laughs> but it's no big deal. This sort of thing happens all the time. I even had full intentions of running the trial this morning. But, but that would have been a bit too much for you. There's no need to act tough in front of us, you know. Regardless, I was dragged here by that man over there. He was so unyielding, one has to wonder if he was simply interested in stealing my case. God damn, Francisco. Turn it down. You're at you're at a 10? You're in a fucking hospital, you just about got shot. Bring it down to about a three. How about that? That was the only logical course of action given the bullet was still lodged in your shoulder. And you're not your father. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Uh, just a little humor. <laughs> uh, but by taking over the case, I found myself having to clean up after you in that irresponsible deal you made. I think I know what deal he's referring to. Oh, we bought flowers? Dude, give her the flowers, man! Miss Von Karma, you made a deal with Miss Andrews yesterday, didn't you? I don't know what you mean. In order to make sure you got your guilty verdict on Mr. On Guard, you told Miss Andrews to not testify in court today. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Do you have proof that I made such a deal? You're denying it? Looks like you, if you were lucky, Mr. Phoenix Wright. If I'd been in court today, this trial would already be over. All while hiding Miss Andrews' own crime? That isn't my problem. Yes, it is. Whether she had tampered with the evidence or not, yes, it is. I have only one objective, to find and guard guilty of murder. No, it's not your only objective. The end justifies the means, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The end justifies the means. I'm sorry, is there an echo in here? Miss Von Karma, Adrian Andrews believed you when you said, if you don't tell the truth of what really happened, then on guard will be found guilty. And what does that have to do with me? Because of that, she's now in danger of being found guilty herself. All because she believed in your words until the very end. That still has nothing to do with me. She's just a weak person, that's all. But you had to know she was. Ow! Why does she have her whip? I think visiting hours here are about over. So if you'll excuse me. What's wrong? Why did she suddenly cut you off? Probably because she thinks I had the advantage in that argument. Edworth. What happened today at the trial, Edward? That was not like you at all. I mean, I know you knew about Miss Sandra's condition. You could have made her testify as many times as you wanted, but to go that far. Uh, but she wouldn't testify about that until I said something. Listen, right? The courtroom is a garden of judgment. I'm putting myself on the line while I stand in there. And that's why I made the witness do the same. It's only natural. By the way, Edgeworth, you were really angry in court today. That's rare for you. That card, what in the world is it? You mean this? Listen, right? This is top secret information. You absolutely cannot leak this. The special investigation team has existed for a number of years, but few know of it. I understand. Their task is to find the owner of this card, a man called Shelley the Killer. And just as his name states, he is a killer, an assassin. The best at that. An assassin? So who is this Shelley the Killer? The killer is the name of a long-standing line of assassins. Long-standing? The name first appeared about a hundred years ago, I hear. Shelley is the professional name of the third heir to the De Killer name. But because his professional name is Shelley, he leaves cards with the shell on him? He has a habit of making sure to leave a card by the body of his victims. Why would he do something like that? We think it is part of his duty to his clients. His duty? If he leaves a card, then his clients can be assured it was he who killed the victim. It also serves as insurance against any charges being pushed onto his clients. I see. The killer, the killer values the trust between his clients and himself above all else. It seems that, it seems that this is one honorable assassin with a moral conscience. I guess that even honorable assassins can assist. So you think this assassin, you think he's the one who did the killing in this case? It won't appear that way. The discovery of the card basically confirms it, wouldn't you agree? Tell you to kill it, huh? Dude, tell him about- Okay, thank god. I noticed something at the trial today. You were behaving in a very strange manner. Is something the matter? Dude, just fucking tell him. Yeah, I guess I should just tell him. Maya, she's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? What does the kidnapper want? An acquittal. 
I see. I had no idea. I will prepare a rescue team as soon as possible and resolve this by tomorrow. Really? Did you hear that, Mr. Nick? Mr. Edward is going to... Stop trying to console me, Edward. I don't need your pity. Mr. Nick? There's no way you can find her. We don't even have a single lead to go on. There's only one way to save her. I, I have to get an acquittal somehow. See my way. Right. Listen, you need to know something. One coroner was killed by Shelley to kill it. And the client who ordered the job is Madame Garand, your own client. Please stop. I can't listen to you. I can't believe that. I see. Well, if you want to continue your investigation, you will need this. What is it? The hotel right now is restricted to police personnel only. And we are looking for any clues that might lead us to Shelley to kill it. If you take this with you to the hotel, I'm sure they won't let you enter. In any case, I must attend to the preparations for Maya's rescue team. We'll meet again if anything should happen, now if you'll excuse me. Didn't I say at the beginning of this case, I'm like, man, I can't wait for the case where a client's actually guilty. I mean, he's not guilty of murder, he's guilty of conspiracy to commit murder. Mr. Nick, do you, do you think Mr. Engard hired an assassin? No way, I mean, he doesn't have a psych lock. Yeah, I guess not. Maya, please, all I ask is to make it home. <laughs> I guess even kidnappers can be a little clumsy. Clumsy enough to drop a card like this for me, even though he said he was an assassin. I bet he's just making that up, just like how Nick does with everything in court. Oh my god. Maya, my heart. Anyway, let's try out the card trick with this card I just found. Sounds like I got the door open. Okay, time to go take a look around. What? What is this place? I've got a feeling I'm not in the hotel anymore. Are those videos over there? Well, I'll worry about that later. For now, I should be looking for clues. No, now, now I should just be running, running like hell. But apparently, I'd rather snoop around first. That way, I can show them to Sis and maybe get out of here. There's another bear. That's weird. What is, what's a figurine on a sofa doing in a place like this? Well, I think it's bear. Oh, how cute. It's got a lot of cuts and slits on it. I wonder if it's some kind of puzzle or something. There's a framed picture sitting on this coffee table. It's a picture of a woman. She's kind of pretty. Oh, is that? What's her face? Celeste Impacts. Yeah, it looks like her. It looks like something's written here. Let's see. Or I could have just continued to read. I think it says, with love, Celeste. I bet this could be a clue. What is this thing? An antenna, I guess? This is a VCR? It sure are a lot of electronic gadgets around here. What is an antenna doing here? Wow, I've never seen a TV this big before. Where's the power button? Phooey, it's busted. I would die, I would so die a happy samurai fan if I ever got to see the nickel samurai on a TV like this. Oh, I can't believe I'm just making a joke about dying, all things considered. Oh, hey, it's a computer. I've never really used one before. Um, I have no idea where the power switch on this thing is. Drat, there goes my plan to use this somehow to get out of here. And go through the doggy door. It's so dark in here that I can barely see, but these kind of feel like videotapes, all of them. Just what kind of room is this? Uh, locked, of course. It doesn't look like I can use the card to open this door. There's a little hole at the bottom of the door. Maybe I was a little skinnier. Then maybe I'd be able to crawl through there. Oh, this simply will not do. I cannot have you wandering around at will. Ah! It seems that your Mr. Wright is truly concerned about you. He is? For now, it's just you remain cooperative. If you cannot, there are ways in which I can help you. Ways? Uh, you mean... Dead men tell no tales is how the saying goes, correct? Dead? I'm almost certain I told you on your first meeting I am an assassin. No way, you're lying. I mean, an assassin? People are not always who they appear to be. Actually, I am exactly who I appear to be, because I have fucking stitches going down the middle of my face. Mr. Nick! Hmm? Oh, yes, Pearls? Caught up in my thoughts about my situation. Mr. Edgeworth has left, you know! I guess for now I have no choice but to believe in Mr. Unguard. But I think I should listen to his story one more time. Alright, let's get going. I'm sorry, but visiting hours are over for today. Ah. Ugh, I have too many questions I need to ask. I'm sorry, but I'm Phoenix Wright, a lawyer for one of the... Hey, Mr. Wright, you say? Oh yeah, there's a message here for you. A message? From Matt on guard. Uh, here you are. What did he write? Is this something really important? I don't know. Well, let's see what it has to say. To, mis to Mr. Lawyer, dude, I've got something really important to tell you. Why do I feel uneasy all of a sudden? Oh, Mr. Wright. So actually, I have a favor to ask of you. I have this cat named Shu. <laughs> of course you do. 
I didn't put out a lot of food when I left the house, so he's probably pretty hungry. You think you could drop by my house and feed Shu for me, dude? My house is just a little ways down from the hotel, alright? This is terrible! It's sorry, we have to feed his cat! I'm sure poor Shu's stomach is growling by now. Yeah, I guess. Client's rest is a request. Guess I should go check up on his cat. Before anybody asks, no, I've never gotten any questions like that. It's <laughs> All right now, Mr. Nick, let's go look for clues. We have to for Mr. Quiet's sake. Oh, you shall not pass. Oh, Miss Old Bag. Don't devalue my name and turn it into a gas, you spiky headed pettifogger. The fuck does that even mean? Because of you, I've been made to look like the bad guy again. Although I did get a piece of gum from Edgy Boy, just as he promised. But what I really want is something much more valuable. I want an edgy Pizarro. I want it all for me. It's all your fault. You were waking the wild bees inside of this old bag. Arr. Sounds more like I awakened the pirate within you. Ah, Miss Old Bag. Keep your hands off me. I'm allergic to children. This helmet is airtight. No air is getting in and no air is getting out. Uh, that is really bad for you. Um, then why do you keep putting it on? Huh, don't you think you can get me to move with silly questions? You're going to have to defeat me if you want to get by. I'm not hearing this. Maybe if I show her this letter I got from Edgeworth. Um, it's all bang, if you would like to look at. What, you want me to look at this worthless piece of... Edgy poo. Ugh, is that her perfume? Is... is Pheromone d'amour? I smell? Ugh. That sounds awful. Every really sissy here. Would you please allow this unsophisticated young person to conduct an investigation? Yours truly, Miles Edgeworth. Yours truly? <laughs> that man's good at flattery. Fine, but only because Edgy Poo said so, you understand? This thought is something I have to do. Remember, no messing around. You do anything bad, I won't let you off the hook. It looks like she has strong feelings for Mr. Edgeworth. That may be, but you know nothing's going to come of it. It's so me, Mr. Nick. Feelings are meant to be told and shared. How? Every time we talk about love, I always end up with a handprint on my face somehow. Anyway, let's continue with our investigation. Okay. What? What now? What do you say before I forget? You can't go inside on guard's room today. Why? The police main investigation team is going to be in there all day, you hear? I wonder if they're the team in charge of investigating the killer. So don't go in there. Set one foot in there, you'll face the wrath of a windy old bag. Sure is dark. I'm gonna turn on a light. What the fuck? Wow, so this is what a star's house looks like. Must be nice to be rich. Come on, Mr. Nick, let's find Shoe the kitty cat. Shoe! I guess this is Shoe. Oh, what a lovely cat. Hello, Shoe. <laughs> the cat seems to like pearls. Oh, pardon me. Why, well, I hope you were something, mister. Oh, uh, we're lawyers. Actually, I'm Mr. Ungard's lawyer. Masters? Then you must be Mr. Wright. Yes? Ah, oh, it's a pleasure to meet your wonderful self. I'm the friendly butler. D of course, your name is John Doe, Shelley. Nice to meet you. You must know all sorts of things about Mr. Ungar, right? Honestly, sir, I don't believe my master is capable of such a foul deed as murder. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It's not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the master of his or his affairs. How typically butler-like, as it were. Mr. Doe, how long have you served at this residence? Or sure, I have to say, maybe about one year. And uh, anything else? No, not especially. It's not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of himself and his affairs. I would have thought Mr. Ungar kind of to have a maid over a butler. It's a very cute cat you've got here. It's my duty to take care of him. The master rather fia fancy shoe. And uh, anything else? No, not especially. It's not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of a friendly cat. Well, then I guess I don't need this piece of scrap paper anymore. Well, I'm afraid I must take my leave of you now. We should probably get going ourselves. Phoenix doesn't think this is weird at all. Why would, why would Matt have us go to his house to feed his cat when he has a butler to do it? And Phoenix is like, oh, makes sense. Wow, so young yet. Already so accomplished, a master of law. There is a, a lot to be proud of being a butler in charge of the house and all. Thank you for the compliment, sir. People are not always who they appear to be. Now, if you'll excuse me. Can we comment on this fucking thing? A giant bicycle is flying through the air! That bicycle pearl is one where you don't have to pedal and it moves on its own. Really? Wow! But sorry to disappoint you, you can't fly. Oh, that's too bad. <gasps> oh! There's a small door at the bottom of this bigger door, Mr. Nick! I bet if it's- I bet it's for Mr. Ungard's cat to use. 
Oh, you mean Chu? <laughs> Stop saying that name. The door, it's locked tight. Oh, well, at least Nick tried to open it. Well, I guess that's to keep nosy people like me from entering it. Uh, oh my God. Ah, there are masks here. Yeah, that one in the middle is the seal samurai. The ones next to it are the pink princess and the evil magistrate. They fought many battles against the backdrop of neo-old Tokyo. Wow, you really know a lot about the steel samurai, Mr. Nick. I don't know whether to laugh or cry that I know more about that show than a kid. There's another door over there. You shouldn't go wandering off over there, Mr. Nick. Yes, Pearls. Now I know how Maya feels when I tell her to stop playing around. Oh, okay. It was, it was the two circular things. All right. So I just misremembered and was dumb. Hey, city boy. Lada, you're still here? Wrecking course. <laughs> the investigative photographer eats or, st or starved on her ability to snap up the scoop, yeah? And this hotel just has that aura of mystery. You know, something's always about to happen. But don't you have a camera? Wreck given. Photographers gotta have cameras out the ear like corn to be a real pro, you know? So I'm hanging around here. Speaking of cameras and feeding the mouth, y'all have mine, your bread thief? Why can't you drop that thief thing already? Oh, okay, I'll we'll talk about it. I'm gonna ask you about the night of the murder. What? You really gonna shell off the bucks for the info I got? Lana, you were loitering in this hallway the night of the murder, were you not? Well, kinda, but brace yourself, Phoenix. Here it comes. I didn't exactly hang around here the entire time, you know? Followed a few stars around, got a few autographs, shook a few hands, had a soda pop with a few of them too. Looks like she wasn't here the entire time that night. The security lady also wasn't in this hallway the whole time either. I guess this means there's no one who can tell us who came and went that night. So about that note that was inside your camera case. Oh, that ditty I wrote? Yeah. Can I believe what you've written? You mean the stuff about on guard shoving his manager lady on the, on the corridor? Yeah. Ah, well, I reckon you best not believe in that. Look, I sort of wrote that on, my, on a whim, you know, writing whatever came to mind. Whatever came to mind? Yeah, when you get down to it, it's just a lot of random bull dooters. <laughs> what's bull dooters? Hey, what's with it? Why are you staring at me like grandpa used to? <laughs> yeah, why do you look like you suddenly got older too? Or am I just shrinking here? Um. Ah, oh, my baby. My $1,600 baby. What's with that red coated prosecutor, anyhow? Guy told me it was evidence and refused to give it back to me. Well, that's kind of how it is. Hey, hey, you're the red coat's friend, aren't you? So put in a few good words for me and get, ba get me back my camera. You want me to do what? Listen, now you got really good for about five hours, and I guarantee you'll give it back. Why don't you do your own dirty work? But well, I reckon it's time for me to get going. Tabloid photographer without a camera is just a tabloid, huh? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Keep yourself together out there, you hear? I'm coming to see you in court tomorrow. Okay, I'll see you then. Hey, you too there, little one. Keep up the good work, okay? Okay. Don't be picky about your food now. Okay. And make sure you do all your homework, you hear? Okay. If you happen to find yourself a camera, make sure you bring it right to me. Uh, would you please just leave already? <laughs> Mr. Nick! What's that otherworldly ghastly moaning? Uh, oh. I hate evil ghosts! What? Are you kidding me? I don't think it's a ghost. Maybe it's a demon? Excuse me! Watch your calling a demon, Brett. I have, do not want to know what she was doing. Ah! Zoinks! It's the alien. Who are you calling an alien? <laughs> oh, it's just you, old Miss Old Bag. What are you doing here? What is wrong with youngins today? came down here to pay my respects to my poor Juan. You're disturbing me. I talked about it plenty at the trial. I thought she'd go off and be like, well, whatever. I was fooled trick and deceived by that fraud of a photographer on her note. She loaded around here with that imbecile look on her face. With that imbecile look on her face? Okay, got it. Now hold on a second here, you little pipsqueak. If you're going to take notes, at least take me some better ones than that. All right. Now I've seen everything. Well, you know, I was working that night, too, doing my job, minding my own business, so it's not like I had time to go waste just standing around here the whole night. I was wondering if you could tell me a bit more about Mr. Corda. He was the most popular star, you know, especially when it counts, when it counts in my book. But I heard that he was lagging behind in the polls against Mr. Ungard. Um, well, well, that's just a recent thing, bad luck and all that, you know. But he was going to become an even bigger star than he used to be. Look, just look at his mountain of presence. The show of mountain of feelings all his fans had for him. Yeah, that mountain's pretty big. It's only had nothing to shake at, as to shake a stick at. Mr. Nick? What is it, Pearls? Presents, they're all bears, right? Is that a point? There isn't a single thing here that isn't a bear. 
All of Mr. Corda's presents from his fans seem to be bears. Oh, that's because you can't think of one without thinking about bears. Bears? Why bears? You don't know? When my dear Juan was training, he fought barehanded with a bear. God damn. He refused to get in and let the bear win, but after the fight, they became friends. But wow, what a warm, heartwarming story. Look, it's just like in those young people dramas. I can see those two tuckered out. Down by a river going, heh, you sure can't fight. Heh, <laughs> you too, bub, you too. Did all that really happen? It's just his biography, bub. What a load of crock. There was just ten fans been giving the bears presents. Yeah, nice bears. I'm Uncle Bear and I say it's barely eight o'clock. What is that infernal racket? Well, the present's going off. Sounds like it's already 8 p.m. Way past your bedtime. Ugh, that startled me. I thought I was gonna die for a second. 8 p.m. That's the time when the award ceremony ended that night, right? Time sure flies. Hard to believe it's been two days since the ceremony. Transceiver. Hello, hello? She's not a phone. Maya, how is Maya? You haven't heard her, have you? It seems you are not able to fulfill your end of the bargain, Mr. Attorney. I have heard the news. So it would seem my presence did you no good. No, Mrs. Maya! One more day, please. All I ask is for one more day. I, I'll get a not guilty verdict for sure this time, please. I suppose if I must. I need that acquittal more than anything else after all. Please, please let Maya say something. I want to hear if she's all right. All right. Then, a little... What is with the static all of a sudden? Hello? It seems... Bad. Connect. Damn it, did the transceiver just suddenly break? Oh, excuse me. What happened? I don't know. All of a sudden it became nothing but static. Ah, uh, Mystic Maya! Why did the transceiver suddenly break like that? I should probably have an electronics expert look at it. It's really better. Hmm. Hey, welcome back, pal. Thought I'd make you a little something for dinner. That's, that's nice, thanks. Rich man's luxurious full course meal. Out of a can, that is. I'm sorry you went through all the trouble to cook, but I don't have time the time to eat. Oops, looks like you don't have a can opener, pal. You gotta be kidding, and here I thought he had whipped, already whipped something up. Fine, all is there, there is one way I know how to be helpful. Ask about anything you want, pal, go ahead. Well, since he's here and offering, I wonder what I should ask him about. That transceiver? Oh, Mr. Nick, you should ask Mr. Scruffy Detective about that thing. What thing? Oh yeah, this thing just, up and broke all of a sudden. It it broke, pal? I was talking to the kidnapper just suddenly broke into static. Look, it sounded like this. I don't hear any static, pal. Huh? Maybe it fixed itself? That's that's strange. I'm sure it was making a loud static noise. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe what? Maybe it was electromagnetic interference, pal. Electromagnetic interference. Transceiver. Never were in this room, it starts acting up and hissing status, static at us. I wonder if there's someone we can talk to about this. Yep. I am a dumb. Um, so what is electromagnetic interference? It's something that happens when a radio wave gets mixed up with another signal, pal. Oh, when you put it that way. I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, for example, the cell phone goes off next to a computer screen. The stuff on the screen gets kind of fuzzy and starts acting funny, right? Huh? Computer? Um, it's like when you use the dryer next to the TV and the screen starts looking weird. Oh, yes, the TV does that! Hmm. Oh, so that's what you're talking about. I'm amazingly happy at being able to understand this. So the room you so the so the room you were in when that transfer nah. so the room you were in when that interference to the transceiver happened. There's gotta be something there that's sending out very strong radio waves, pal. But radio waves. Probably even one of those bears. Something like like a listening device or something. Ah. Hey, speaking of that, where were you when it happened? We were in Mr. Corda's room to see the murder. What? That's it. I'm going to sing out of that precinct and get a bug sweeper. I'll meet you at the crime scene later, all right, pal? Wait, Gumshoe. Oh yeah, baby, it's investigation. It's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah. You should get going too, Mr. Nick. All right, let's go. Hey, you're finally here, pal. Sorry to keep you waiting. Is he Sonic the fucking hedgehog? He ran all the way to the precinct, snuck around, got what he needed to get, and then ran all the way back here, where we went straight from our office to here and still got here after he did. Sorry to keep you waiting. Yeah, the um, bug sweeper? Um, well, you see, I busted trying to sneak in, pal. Then suddenly I'm staring at the precinct doors. From the outside, I mean. So yeah, I couldn't get one of the police bug sweepers. 
What do you mean you couldn't get one? We need that item. Hey, hey, calm down, pal. I didn't say I get. Yep. I didn't say I didn't get one. Just out of places. Wow, this is a bug sweeper. Looks like a little. It looks a little broken. Hey, this was made when I was in elementary school, pal. Oh, by who? Me, of course. Ah, uh, seeing that short back brings back memories. Okay, so not only he ran from the office to the precinct to his home, then here before we did. Hey, don't look down on it, pal. Sure, it looks a little beat up. But I put my heart and soul into building this puppy here. Your heart and soul? It'll work. Trust me, pal. It'll do the job. But, but, well, you can't set the sensitivity. So it's going to beep at anything that gives off electro electromagnetic waves. Blah. But isn't it better that way? Oh, 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 oh. Well, anyway, since I brought it all the way, might as well give it a whirl, right, pal? Getting that sinking feeling again. Okay, now I'll tell you how to use this, baby. There's a listening device or some other sort of bug hitting in this room, pal. So we're gonna find it, right? Right, now first, let's turn the sweeper off. Move the sweeper around to give the room a real thorough look easy. see Sweeper will let you know how strong the signal is if it's picking up, so keep an eye on it, alright? When you find something that's giving off a lot of radio waves, press the A button to lock onto it. There's a lot of things here that's going to give off radio waves. So let's take a good look at anything and everything that seems suspicious, okay, pal? Alright, I'm gonna stand outside and keep an eye out. Give me a yell if you find the bug. Got it, pal? Oh, what a lovely bear! Ah! Ah, this must be one of those fancy bear-shaped toy robots. It's a robot? It's a real robot? Yeah, it's a real one. Mr. Nick! Yes? How many horse powers did it? How many horsies? Oh my god, that's so adorable. Horsies? Um, well, it's a bear, so... Um... Oh. There it is. This is, this is a giant stuffed teddy bear, right? This is the biggest one I've ever seen. Hey, so did you guys find it yet? Listening device, I mean. No, not yet, but this bear's eye is. Let's see, let's see. A perfectly normal stuffed bear with some really strong radio, radio waves. Not like you found advice to me, pal. Let's look this big fella's eyes out and see what we've got. No, you can't. Such, such a violent act. Ah, rip. No. That's... It's a miniature camera. Looks like there's more. The transmitter and a timer? Oh, what a transmitter, pal. Oh, uh, is this more of that high tech stuff? This tiny thing is a camera. Yep, it's a pinhole CDC CCD camera, pal. It's a small high grade video camera used mostly in security systems. It's a video camera. Runs out of battery, which comes with it with, within a set. But there's no videotape in this camera. There's only the, the camera part here, pal. A tape recorder with a tape inside it somewhere else. The footage is changed into the radio waves and then it's sent to that recorder. So it's sort of like a TV broadcast, isn't it? Hey, you know, you're right. So what is a transmitter? It's a device that sends the footage the camera took to a specific destination. It's like a video version of a listening device, pal. Looks like it's attached to a small clock-like thing. Oh, that's a timer, pal. You can set it to turn the camera on and record at a certain time with it. You can set it for a certain time? Yep, let's see. Looks like it was set to start at 8 p.m. and go for one hour. 8 p.m.? That was the time the award ceremony ended. There's no date set, so it's been recording every night, I guess. Mr. Detective, how long has this bear been here? Um, I'm pretty sure it's been here since the night of the murder. And maybe... Maybe this camera caught the murder on tape. What? Hey, if you think about the angle the bear's at, it's bound to have a clear shot of the whole crime, pal. Uh, uh. There's a camera in this bear's eye. And it was disguised as a present. I'm sure it was here on the night of the murder, pal. It's pretty big, so it stands out pretty well in my mind. But who gave Mr. Corda this present? I, uh, I don't know, pal. But this means that someone out there has got a video of what happened there that night. Isn't there any way we can find out who that person is? It's impossible, pal. Radio waves can be sent almost anywhere, so there's no real way to find out. Oh. There's really no way to find out. I got it. What? Hey, pal, let me borrow this mini camera for a bit. What were you gonna do? I'm gonna go around to electronic shots and see if I can find out who bought that. But that's impossible. I mean, it's already 9 p.m. Leave it to me. Even though I have to search all night, I'll find your, I'll find your man, pal. Oh yeah, baby, it's investigation time. Investigation time. I'm on fire, pal. My friends are like, yeah. He's gone. Yeah. Mr. Scruffy Detective sure is a nice man. He's pushing himself so hard, all for Mystic Maya's sake. It's a mystery how you always manage to do things in the most inefficient ways, right? Ugh. You'll have to excuse me, I heard your conversation just now. Edgeworth, what are you doing here? Our rescue team has been created and deployed. I can't say I'm optimistic, but we have to move forward one step at a time. I see, thanks. Don't thank me yet, we still have to find her. 
Hmm. So there was a spy camera hidden inside the stuffed animal, huh? You're one lucky man, right? Do you know this stuffed bear, little girl? Um, I have no idea. Of course not. The maker of this bear is a very expensive lux luxury brand from overseas. It's completely handmade and only a small number of these are exported here. What? The camera and transmitter that Scatterbrain Detective took with him are dead ends. Things like those can be bought anywhere. However, this bear is different. By tracking how it got into this country, this bear can tell us who the buyer is. Can you really do that, Mr. Nick? Can you really? Well, I guess so. Hmm. It's 9 p.m. I think I can still make it in time. I'll be taking this for now. I'm sure you have other things you have to do. See you soon, right? What? Why are you doing this? I have no interest in explaining myself to someone who cannot comprehend. Of sides then, right? Until court reconvenes tomorrow, you should concern yourself with this question. Who was the person that murdered Juan Corda? The real killer. You really still think it was Adrian Andrews? To be honest, I don't know anymore. You still have a little time left. Find the truth, right? Everything begins with the truth. One court is the real killer of Miss Andrews' past. Kidnapper whose sole condition is an acquittal from Mr. Ungard and his card, Shelly the Killer. Maya, the only way I can save you now is to find all the answers in this case tonight. I don't understand what your real intentions are, Edgeworth. But as you said, all I can do for now is find the truth. Boom. To be continued.